Hello everyone, right now I am with uh, Aaron Davis, who also goes by the name of Kumavis. He is building um, an alternative to Mist called Metamask. That's right. Uh, for our viewers that don't know of Mist, it's supposed to be a dApp browser. First, before going into what dApp browsers are, let us have an introduction from Aaron. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Aaron, goodbye Kumavis. Uh, I've been working on uh, Metamask for the past year. I recently joined Consensus, and uh, we're trying to bring Ethereum to everyone, get it in the hands of every single person on the planet uh, as soon as possible. So uh, fundamentally tell me, what is a dApp browser, and why do we need one? Right, uh, so what is a dApp browser? Uh, let's take that even a little further. What is, what is a dApp and, and what is Ethereum? Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I describe Ethereum as a, a sort of a new neighborhood on the internet. Uh, I'll, I'll hold it. Mm -hmm. You can focus on talking. Uh, a new, I describe Ethereum as a new neighborhood on the internet and it's uh, sort of the, the way you interact is, is a bit different. There's new rules. Uh, it's a new space to explore. Um, and similarly to the internet you're familiar with, we, we make web apps and we make these, these uh, points of interaction uh, that talk to other agents on the internet. And in the case of the DAP, uh, what would be traditionally the server in your client server model of a, of a web, website like Facebook or whatever, um, we uh, use in place of the server a, an agent on the, on the blockchain. And uh, we can use this as uh, for small storage for important things like uh, identity and reputation and things like this. Um, and so the, there's basically two new elements to, to adapt. And that is, one, all transactions are signed. Unlike on a traditional web page, you don't have a username and login. Instead, we have unified identity across the whole Ethereum network. And and uh, all your actions are cryptographically signed, as opposed to starting a session, authenticating a session, and then interacting during that session, like you do in the traditional internet. Um, the other thing is access to the blockchain data. Uh, in, in a normal situation like, like Facebook, all, your, all the data you just get from Facebook, and that's, that's your only option. That's, so, uh, you know, Facebook has the power to, to censor and, and do whatever they like, really. Um, in, in the case of the Ethereum internet, you have uh, all, these, all these peers holding the data, and you can, you can pull it from anyone you want. Um, and so to run a dApp, you need access to this, this key management system, so you can sign your transactions sign your interactions with the internet, and you need, uh, you need access to the data to begin with. And, and so um, similarly to with Bitcoin, you would have a wallet application. Uh, the Ethereum uh, core developers have uh, produced a project called Mist, which is a sort of web browser and wallet combined. It, it manages your keys. You can sign and send either, but you can also do more complex interactions with the, with the network, um, much like interacting with the social network, uh, betting in a prediction market, uh, what have you. Um, and MIST is fantastic. It's a very, very interesting project. Um, but un unfortunately, the adoption story is a little difficult. If I'm doing some crazy crowdfunding thing where, where people who participate in the crowdfund get equity shares, um, and have voting rights or something like this, you, it's easy, fairly easy to build this on top of Ethereum. Um, but the hard part is, hey, uh, don't you want to participate in my crowdfund? Just download this web, uh, this web browser first. This is a, a serious adoption issue. Uh, and and to, to tackle this, um, I started MetaMask. MetaMask is a, a set of tools um, to, just to make this easier and, and to make uh, to help you access the Ethereum internet from your normal web browser. So, so we're in, I'm really interested about MetaMask. Uh, but first, let's, what is the exact difference between a Bitcoin wallet and for Ethereum a dApp browser? Mm -hmm. So uh, why didn't we need smart contract browsers or Bitcoin is a scripting language of its own. Why didn't we need like browsers for accessing Bitcoin? We just had wallets. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so, what so changes in Ethereum that that, that right. you start to need a browser like that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's an excellent question. Um, and so, if you're if you're familiar with Bitcoin, you 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 know how you need to send transactions out to the network to, to make a change. But these the the sort of state of the system is quite simple in Bitcoin. It's just um, it's effectively how much Bitcoin do you have access to? Um, the, you know the implementation details are not really important, but it's just. You have this number, I have this number, and that number changes. In, in Ethereum describes a much more uh, complex, arbitrarily complex state. So if I can make something like a name registry, and you can start writing names to my registry, you can um, do things like that. You can, um, it can be a sort of market where you can have order books and things like this. You can have, my, my friend is working on a project called Boardroom that runs an entire organization on the blockchain and you have proposals and votes and you know board members and recursively you can have subcommittees and do all this crazy complex stuff. Um, so the, the point is that the, the state that's stored on the blockchain is more complex and therefore when you try to make, when you propose changes to the state, you need uh, a more semantic way, you need a better way of exposing that data to the user and a better way of uh, suggesting or allowing the user to make changes to that data. So in a sense, what, what is happening here is because the kinds of things that reside on the Ethereum network like profiles or domain registrations or you know particular markets or exchanges, mm -hmm. these are very complex entities. Yes. So uh, like in, in a software sense, they are very, very complex entities. Indeed. So you, you need a bigger set of graphical user elements exactly. in order to represent, in order to have like a good representation of these complex entities on the user. Yes, absolutely. So, so ultimately the way, the way you can think of it is um, like what's happening inside the computer in, in, in JavaScript is like the skeleton, mm -hmm. but then you need a face that is the normal browser. So in the HTTP web, you, you need a face to that computation. Precisely. And now... Because displaying just a balance uh, is, is fairly simple. You can do that in a, a very easy text-based format. But uh, if you want to uh, describe proposals and, and votes and standing, uh, uh, these sorts of things, it's, it's much more complex. And you need these complex uh, visuals. OK. So as far as I'm aware, uh, there have already been a lot of technologies for displaying complex visuals. The, the things that comes to my mind is like, at a basic level, you have scalable vector graphics. Then you have things like frameworks like D3, which can al allow you to do very complex uh, right. graphical representation. Uh, why can't these be repurposed for Ethereum? Why do you need a separate software for it? Uh, so actually, all of these are, are uh, repur repurposable for Ethereum. Um, the plan is we didn't want to you know, reinvent the way uh, someone builds apps, someone builds interactive tools. Um, so we, we chose the web standard. and. The, the spec for a, a DAP, like a front end, is, is simply that you have the normal browser environment with the JavaScript, you have your HTML and your CSS, and, and just in the JavaScript environment, you have an, an extra um, uh, object you can interact with, and that is for talking to the blockchain, both reading from the blockchain and suggesting transactions for the user to make. OK, so, um, so now, uh, so basically, when I have a DAP browser, yes. The, is the DAP browser also an Ethereum node? Yes. Um, currently, the DAP browser is a full Ethereum node, um, but it could uh, just as well be a light client or something like this. And that, you definitely want that if for a mobile device. So uh, now let's get into what MetaMask, like maybe there's a, going to be a family of DAP browsers in the future, So and MetaMask will be one of them. So let's get into what MetaMask is and what is what differentiates MetaMask from Mist. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So as I described before, uh, you you have the normal sort of web development experience. Uh, you just have this extra glue, which uh, which uh, ties into reading from the blockchain and ties into transaction signing. Um, and so we need uh, a sort of a new environment beyond the the default browsers that we have today to to sort of just inject that little access in there. Um, and so, certainly, in the future, Firefox and Chrome could, could just adopt these standards if they really like them, and then they would be available there. But in the meantime, um, 
we either need a special web browser that you have to download, or we need to come up with another solution. Mm -hmm. And so that's where MetaMask enters the picture. Mm -hmm. um, so the first th that will be released is a little plugin, you know, a little Chrome extension, and that uh, injects this this global into the into the JavaScript environment. And so then a, a DAP can start uh, reading from a blockchain and and letting you interact with it. Okay, so um, so. Walk, walk us through an example application. Like you mentioned this app application called Boardroom. Yeah. Uh, perhaps that can be viewed on MetaMask? Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's say you, you load up Boardroom in some uh, Ethereum-enabled uh, browser, like Chrome with a MetaMask extension. Um, there's The first thing you would see on a normal website would be your login forms. We get to skip this immediately, because your browser knows who you are and has can access the whole uh, range of the blockchain data. So the f first thing it does is it, it pulls up the relevant, uh, say, boards that you're a member of, and that you're participating in. Um, and it, it's just going to uh, read sort of, you know, the models, what are the boards. And then when you click on one of the boards, it'll read what are the proposals that are currently underway and what are the historical proposals. And then with the, you know, uh, the, this boardroom front end, you can start digging through all, all the data that's stored in the blockchain. What is this active proposal? How many votes are, have currently gone through? How much time before the, the vote closes? And this sort of thing. And that can be displayed in really nice, you know, like have a fancy pie chart and have whatever uh, beautiful graphs you want to analyze the data, help the user analyze the data. Okay, cool. So, so basically, like whatever runs on Ethereum, whatever kind of computation is running on Ethereum, can can be can basically have the front end on 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 the DApp browser. And in your case, the speciality is that uh, MetaMask does not need the user to download any special software, but just install a ins download and install a Chrome extension, right. and then the normal Chrome browser becomes like your DApp browser. That's correct. And then your normal Chrome browser can now go ahead and interact with the Ethereum blockchain, uh, and display applications, and you can have a wallet inside inside Met MetaMask inside Chrome, yeah. and send transaction and receive transactions, etc. Yeah, uh, precisely. So. Right, the first thing that we're deploying is the extension. So it does require a little effort on your part. You have to go find the extension and install it. Um, it another project that's in the works is a completely hosted browser. And so you could go to uh, the MetaMask website, metamask.io, and when it's ready, you'll just have sort of a web browser inside your web browser. And, and then you can start using dApps and signing transactions and things like this. And that requires zero installation. Um, and I think that will really help bring new people into the ecosystem. Okay. So in this conference, it became pretty clear that many people are actually thinking of combining two technologies to do interesting things. Like one, one combination that, that may turn out to be popular is IPFS and Ethereum. So you have the computation running on a blockchain, and then if you have data for the computation that can be stored on this uh, data structure, which is IPFS, which is a Merc Merkleized data structure. In the future, you might imagine other technologies that are going to uh, exist alongside Ethereum and uh, deliver some services to it. So is MetaMask also, can it also interface with IPFS or run an IPFS node in the background as well? Uh Yes, currently, uh, DAP, uh, so the, the Ethereum community and the IPFS community uh, have a lot of overlap and we're very interested in, in, in both protocols. Um, and, and therefore, uh, DAP developers are trying to, to so currently they, they host their, their web app as a normal web page on the internet, but this is um, you know, only halfway to our, to our decentralized future, so we want to go all the way, um, and IPFS certainly helps us do that. Because you have to deliver those front ends. Even if all your data, all your interaction happens via a smart contract, we still have to deliver those front end files. Those aren't stored on the blockchain. Um, and so IPFS is a fantastic way of doing that. Um, and so uh, since the sort of DAP development ecosystem is still fairly early, um, the spec has not included any requirements of it being on IPFS or anything like this. Um, so, but it's, we're certainly moving in that direction, and more and more uh, DAP developers are putting their stuff on IPFS, and, and therefore MetaMask will, will support that, absolutely.
Um, and this is another example of how, uh, how the web browsers we use today aren't quite ready for, for our decentralized future as much as we're, we're ready to, to start using it. Yeah. So now if, you've, if you're building this Chrome extension um, that, that serves to be your wallet and serves to interact with the Ethereum blockchain, are you constrained in the in the languages that you can build uh, that you can use to to build a wallet? For instance, um, if you have a desktop wallet, right? The the developer has full choice on what kind of desktop wallet does he want to build. He mm -hmm. can have, use a low level language, you can yep. use a high level language, mm -hmm. etc. But if you are if you if you're specifically growing growing in uh, going in the browser environment. Does that constrain the amount of choices you have to build something like MetaMask? Uh, so certainly MetaMask is living in the browser and so you have to choose uh, browser tools or at least somehow compile to your, your standard browser stack. Um, though for this is not true for Ethereum in, in general. If you want to build something that interacts with Ethereum, um, there's a wide range of languages you can choose from. There's Ethereum implementations in C++ and Go. Those are the primary ones. There's also Python, JavaScript, Haskell, Java, um, uh, and, and more in the works from, from core and from community. So my question is, is there any, any security co consequence of having your private keys in the browser itself? Um, so let's say like I'm, I have like 10,000 ether, right? Mm -hmm. It's a huge amount. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm actually taking part in applications that need that kind of value. Maybe I'm a trader on, an ex, on a big uh, decentralized exchange on mm -hmm. Ethereum. Now, will I actually want to use a browser-based wallet rather than have something which is more low level where, these, where the security guarantees might be higher? Yeah, uh, that's true. With, with MetaMask, you're, you do kind of tune down some of the control and the security in that you have to rely on Chrome being uh, not, not running away with your keys and, um, and MetaMask not publishing bad code. In general, it's, it's all about all the code you're running needs to be published by non-evil actors. Yeah. Or, um, but uh, and you, you, sort of, you have the same thing with a, something like Mist, um, but the so if you, if you feel more comfortable, more confident using uh, Mist, that's fantastic. You can be, it can be, I think it's a pro user tool and that's fantastic. Uh, of course, with, with augmenting Chrome the way we do with MetaMask, um, we don't have as much control over the design of it. We can just sort of add little things here and there. Whereas Mist has, has room to fundamentally change how you, what, what it means to be a, a web browser. Um, and so I don't see them really as competing. They're, they're sort of, um, alternate solutions that, that take very different approaches. And if, if you join with MetaMask because it's the easiest thing to do, and later you, you move on to Mist, that's fantastic. I'm very happy. The, the ultimate goal for me is getting more people using this wonderful technology. So what kind of applications have you already seen on MetaMask? Like, what, what, can, I, what can I browse through MetaMask today? Yeah, uh, so MetaMask will be launching in, in, in about a month with the, with the extension. Just want to make sure it's nice and polished and works for everyone and that the security concerns, any security concerns are taken care of. Um, but the first steps that we're seeing are certainly crowdfunding with uh, Wayfund. And, and this is nice because uh, it's not just raising money, but you can give tokens in return for what was raised and those can have a, a arbitrary meaning. They can just be sort of a badge like Thank you for supporting us. It can be voting tokens. It can be, uh, they could be redeemed later for some service that your company is gonna provide, whatever that might be. Um, as I mentioned before, Boardroom kind of takes up the next step where now you can, that organization you started can have a, a, a governance structure and that's built very modularly. So you can, you can try out all kinds of different ways of coming to consensus as a company. And you could do a, tr a traditional top-down structure or, or something much crazier. Um, let's see, there's also a lot of interest in, in uh, betting applications, of course, so there's uh, poker and other things. And then there's um, markets, decentralized exchanges. Since it's very easy to create uh, meta coins on Ethereum, you know, some arbitrary coin, uh, we now have decentralized exchanges to, to pass those around on. Um, one, one fantastic project is, is called BTC Relay. Yeah. This is still under development, but it, it really shows the power of 
arbitrary computation that you can do on top of Ethereum. And so what they've done is basically built an entire Bitcoin-like client inside of Ethereum and running on chain. And so you can feed um, solved blocks uh, from the Bitcoin blockchain into Ethereum and it's able to validate them, basically just do SPV validation. And then uh, other agents inside the Ethereum blockchain can, can talk to that thing and say like, hey, was this transaction made it into the blockchain? Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty powerful. Cool, like these applications seem really amazing. Now on some level, something like a browser, like a, something, like, something new like a dApp browser, essentially needs to be played with by the, by the viewer. I mean, talking about it can only take you so far in appreciating what it really is. Yes. So where can, like how and where can the viewers just either see a video on MetaMask mm -hmm. or play with it? Yeah, so if you go to the website, MetaMask, dot io, mm -hmm. M-E-T-A-M-A-S-K mm -hmm. dot io. Um, there's a video of an early preview um, and there's a, a newsletter you can sign up for so we can uh, let you know when we're ready to go, ready to launch, and maybe uh, you can join a private beta if you're interested and uh, that's, that's a place to go for all the updates. Cool, and how can our viewers reach you in case? Yeah, I'm uh, Kumavis on GitHub, um, Aaron on fire on Twitter um, and Aaron A A R O N at Kumavis dot me for my email. Cool, it was great talking to you, Aaron. Thanks for the nice explanation on DAP browsers. Absolutely, thank you.